So uh, this morning I will be sharing with us. Um, um, uh, we've been going through a series of what it uh, means as a community, an inclusive community. Uh, today we're looking at a sacrificial community. Uh, what does it mean um, for us to be a sacrificial community? Um, I'm going to spend a bit of time. Um, yeah, talking about that. Um, we've got a scripture that we're going to, uh, yeah, it's coming up. Thank you, Yochton. Um, we're reading Mark chapter uh, 8. Yeah, verse 27 to 38. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Christ. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. He then began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders chief priests and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter, get behind me, Satan, he said, you do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world yet forfeit his soul? Soul. Sorry. Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the son of man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his father's glory with the holy angels. Amen. So really the first question um, that we ought to be asking ourselves is what does it mean to be a sacrificial community and i don't think there's any other better ways to go about this but then but to look at what does it mean first of all to be a sacrifice and then we can look at individually and then we can look as a community what this looks at what this looks at for us looks like for us and so I want us to look at Jesus, um, who was the greatest sacrifice of all time. Uh, our Father, as, as I said quite a few times at the beginning of the service, um, praise God that seems to be linked to this now, that he, Jesus, being the great sacrifice, his Father sending his son Jesus to die for us, giving his life away for us. And actually, one of the things about this, when I, when I think about Jesus, that he did not consider his life being his. He didn't consider, he didn't say that this is my life, but actually he came in, onto earth saying, my father has given me this life and I come to this earth with a purpose and mission in mind, knowing that he has to die. He recognizes this is not my life, but actually it's about what God wants to do with my life. He is the one who's ultimately in control. And, and I love that because when we read the scripture, especially verse 33, when when Jesus rebukes Peter and he says, get behind me, Satan, you, you're, you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. And so 
we know that Jesus from childhood till the end, one thing that uh, was not mentioned a lot, but he was about his father's business. It was always about what does my father want me to do? And he was very clear from when he was a child till now. It's all about what the father wants me to do. And it's the same for us, church. What does the father want us to do? And it's, um, he, 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 of course, went to the extent of death. It wasn't just, oh, God, what do you want me to do throughout his life? But until the point of death, he has always considered his life not being his but it's the father's and the father is in control and I'm listening to the father. And as the father follows me, I follow. And he tells me I'm going to die for the world. And so I'm going to do it. Like Jesus, who had this mindset and this heart that um, this life is not mine, it's, it's God's. We need to come to the place of... Um, to actually, we need to come to that same mindset and heart as Jesus did. What does this look like? You know, I, I would say that we, we know that, you know, oftentimes we sing a song, I surrender to God and, and we surrender everything to Jesus and all that kind of stuff. And, and it's almost a, a progressive thing as we grow closer to God. We, okay, I surrender this to you. I don't want to hold it on to, too much to myself and stuff like that. But Actually, you know, there's, there's a much bigger thing in the sense that when we came to Christ, we actually surrendered everything onto Jesus. So when, when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and, and we go through baptism, and this is the greatest sign that we put ourselves to death, and then we become a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old has passed away, and the new has come. And so now, everything that I held on to myself, it's no longer mine. What do I mean? Meaning that finances, my finances, my salary that I earn, it's mine, but actually it's the Father's because I have surrendered everything. My car is mine, but actually is the father's. My house is mine, but actually is the father's. You see, everything is the father's and we are to steward these things that are in our life according to God's will. And see, when we start looking at it like this, we start viewing our life very differently. You know, it's not just the possessions, but it's our time. You know, oftentimes people say time is money. Oh, you know, my time is precious to me. And a revelation that I had is I also would say, you know, my time is very important. But you know what? It's not because it's my time, because I need to be very careful about what I do with my time was actually God's time. What does God want to do with the time that I have surrendered to him? And I hope you can see the theme of sacrifice in all of these things. It's not yours to begin with, church. Well, it was maybe before you gave your life to Jesus. But the minute you gave your life to Jesus, everything becomes his. And so now it's not even my time that I need to be considerate of what I do with my time because it's not my time because it's his, but also my life. My life is not mine because I have already given it away when I died in the water and I said you know I, I, this is the whole point of the baptism because when we do baptisms every year and we put people in the water you know we 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 keep them there for a minute for a second or so but if I, we were to keep them there for 30 seconds a minute <laughs> they're dead <laughs> and and the whole point of that is to give us that image that I have died to who myself I have died to myself, and now my life is God's, is Jesus's. It's no longer mine. And the problem is, we hold on to my life. <laughs> we hold on to my time. I hold on to my children. I hold on to my this, because you're saying it's mine. But forgetting that when you gave your life to Jesus, it's no longer yours, it's God's. Don't get me wrong. Of course it's yours. But... The attachment of mine stumbles you from being free 
to give it as a sacrifice. Because when I'm saying this is mine, then it's a lot harder for me to give it away. But when I say actually it's not mine, it's God's, it's easier. You be, you're more likely to give something that's not yours because it's not yours, who cares? But if it's mine now, I got to think about it, <laughs> right? I got to think about it. If, if somebody, you know, says, oh, you know, why don't you, somebody says, why don't you give them money? Yeah, why don't you give them money? What's wrong with you? But then they ask you, no, oh, what about you? Oh, I got to think about that one. <laughs> because the attachment is to do with me. Church, one more thing about life, you know, uh, uh, we, we hold on to our life so much, even more so in this COVID-19 times, forgetting that the life is not ours because we have surrendered to God. And, you know, often we pray the prayer, may they live a long life. Actually, Old Testament would probably, you might come, it might come to your mind that Old Testament says, you know, obey your parents so that you may live a long life. But church, you know, the New Testament speaks something different. The New Testament is not about holding on to your life because we see that Jesus says, if you try to hold on to your life, you will lose it. But for the sake of the gospel and you will save it. It's not about, you know, we look at the news. Oh, Paul, 20 year old, he died. Oh, what a short life he lived. Poor him or her, whoever, they never got to marry, they never got to enjoy life. Guys, these are thinking of the flesh. Jesus is not interested in these things. Do you know what he's interested in? Not the things of men, but the things of God, scripture says. And the things of God, what he's, he's, he's really focused about is about doing the will of God. It's about emptying our cup, as Jesus says, when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, he said, he said, Lord, if this cup may pass. But then Paul says the same cup he is emptied. I have already been emptied. I have completed the race. I have run my race. I have run forward and I'm not looking back and I'm looking ahead to do the will of the father. And so you could be 20 years old and you have completed the will of God and you can die happily because you have done the will of God. And this is the most important thing. Don't hold on to your life because the life is not yours. What does it mean then to, you know, as I'm unpacking, what does it mean to be a sacrifice as a church, as a community, as individuals? It's about, first of all, understanding that when you have this mindset, I believe, as Jesus did, this is not mine, it's not my life, I'm here to serve a purpose then the way we will be sacrificial with our things, our time, you will see it very differently. I speak about time. I speak about money quite a lot. The time that we spend in the church, in the community, doing these things. You know, yesterday, um, just, just, just to share very quickly, last night, a friend of mine, um, her brother, uh, got, he actually lived in, in Coventry. He came down to Croydon for something. Um, he un unfortunately got beaten up and got, he went to hospital. And, and uh, my friend shared that with us and, um, and obviously quite sa saddened by the news. And, and, and the thought came to my head, oh, I would love to offer them, do you want any help? But, you know, it's already 8 p.m. and I need to put Sophia to bed. And, 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 and it's like, oh, it's my time. And then, as I, of course, I'm preparing the sermon now. And the thought came to my head, whoa, hold on. <laughs> it's not your time. <laughs> it's God time. What does he want you to do with that time? You might have all kinds of plans, but what is God's plan? And so I offered if you need any help, <laughs> but she didn't take it anyway, but she was happy with that. But you see this sacrifice, it's not yours. It's, it's, it's acknowledging that it's the father's. And, and so when we serve in church, you know, ever since I've come to EBBC, it always seems to be, we are short in people. We need people to serve. Where are the people? And I wonder what your thoughts are. Oh, my work is priority. 
oh my 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 children my this i'm not saying don't go to work or don't don't um don't look after your children but remembering that who have we given our life to what does god want us to do with that time this is the, the most important thing and you know even as i say this I, i know with our young people you know they've started school now and i tend to be a bit harsh with them with when when we when we meet up uh, well, this, sorry i'm talking about our our thursday group here where we do discipleship and and then they would uh what we just to very quickly say we go through, through some bible studies they read uh, certain scriptures or they would go through certain books and they'll come and share what they read and uh, quite a few of them i said ah oh, you know school has started now and i don't have much time and you know i have to focus on this and so i don't have much time to read scripture and i was like wow okay i hear that i hear that but you know what i see i feel like the whole world is doing this it's that our priority has really messed us up because now all of a sudden because something else has come up what i see often is that instead of jesus being the focus and then i focus on jesus and then everything else works around that so my job around that my children around that my work around that rather what i see is that people are prioritizing job children this that and the other and then i have little time left then let me spend time with jesus church this is not the way this is not the way to to put jesus last if we have truly surrendered our life to jesus and all of these things revolve around jesus not the other way around and so we're so tied to these things that oh and 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 i would challenge you ask yourself the question what does god want you to do in that moment what is is this a thing of the men or is this a thing of god because i'm pretty sure peter when he got told get behind me satan by jesus you know it's take take the same scenario if i tell start telling you guys you know don't look after your children anymore don't make that the priority don't make your work priority make god the priority and then you turn around and 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 you say to me no 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 this is can you imagine jesus rebuking you saying why are you focusing on the things of men and not of god just think about it again i'm not saying forget about your children forget about work forget i'm not saying that but i'm hopefully i'm planting the thought in your mind are you being intentional about this about who the priority is i need to move on doing the will of god is what matters here as jesus says and we know that our bigger purpose as a community as individuals is spreading the good news of jesus building the kingdom of god how we do we do this by having the mindset of sacrifice by having the mindset and the heart that is not mine but it's god's to what extent do we do this because surrendering your time to serve in the church we need this giving your money as we do your tithe to the church to build God's kingdom we need this but jesus takes it one step further to the extent of your life ooh this is a whole different story now <laughs> because you might say hey i'm doing my part i'm doing i'm doing my tithe i'm coming to sunday i'm doing this but are you doing it to the extent of your life that this is your main focus this is now really challenging <laughs> really challenging but this is what the scripture calls us to be are we being a serving church or a sacrificial church because we can be a serving church which is great 
but a sacrificial church, a, a, a church that does not think about themselves. And John 15, when Jesus says that, what is the scripture? Um, to lay down one's life for the brethren, making others your priority, not you. Woo. This is really, <laughs> really challenging. But do we have that sacrificial mindset as a church? As we come together, we think, hey, it's not about my time. Let me, let me go litter picking because it's about God's time. Let, let me serve in the church because about building God's kingdom. Let me not focus so much on, about my life, but let me focus more about others in the church as we serve one another. Because church, as we, have ten, well, as we build this mindset of inclusivity, of one mind, of sacrificial individually, each one of us coming together with that mindset can you imagine how much we will grow in serving the community wow if only each one of us came to that same mindset same heart that it's not mine but it's God's and that my matters my problems can come second and my brothers or my sister's problems can come first how often do we do this? Let me, let me deal with myself first and then I'll look after you. But there's so many examples, even Corinthians, we know Paul who is calling out to his, to his disciples to support the church in Jerusalem, even though they are struggling, still encouraging them. It's okay if you're struggling still, but put others before you. And I believe as we do this, Jesus says that how do you know who's in Christ, who's a true disciple? By your love for one another. Church, as we sacrifice our life, our time, our belongings, our everything, this is ultimately showing the love of God for each one of us. And as the community sees this love, that people giving their time to do all kinds of things for the church and for the community, they see this unconditional love that's in each one of us, not just one individual. And we come as a community showing, just putting up on the board, this is the love of God that we are sharing. I believe this is what it means to be a sacrificial community as a church, as a body of Christ, as each one of us who are members in the body, we do our parts. And church, when we don't do our parts, then the edification or the furtherance of the gospel is limited. When one is called to evangelize, when one is called to teach, when one's called to prophesy, when we sit back and don't do these things, then we are limiting the body for its growth. Really, the most challenging thing is I am pushing the boat out here because I'm not just telling you come and serve. I'm telling you do it to the extent of giving up your life for the sake of the gospel. If we become believers who are not bothered about our life and full, totally focused on, on God's will, on his, on our father's business, then we will thrive like anything. I believe it truly because this is the model that Jesus has set for us. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. I hope I, I can encourage you with this word. Let's come together, laying aside our things. What's our priority? What I think my priority is. Let's come together, church, seeking the will of God and serving the almighty king. Yeah. Why don't we spend some time in prayer? Father, I pray just now in Jesus' name, even if there are amongst us those who have been holding so dear to their lives, so self-centered, focused on themselves, 
or even those who think it was enough to do X and Y, and, but not truly to the extent that you have called us. I'd like to take us, give us this time to repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry that I have not lived up to the way that you expected me to live. Father, we want to repent, and I too want to repent, Lord, for the times where I'm focusing on myself and, and not putting my brother or my sister before me. Jesus, help us to see the bigger vision that you have for us as a church. Help us to separate ourselves from our old self, from what's mine to what's yours. Holy Spirit, come and have your way in us. Have your way in us. Changes from the inside out. To be more like you. I just sense in my spirit, maybe some of us, we think this is too hard. I can't do this. Or even if I wanted to, how? I believe with all my heart that if we have a repentant heart to turn our ways, to change our mind, 180 degrees turn. If we believe it in our heart that you want to do this, you want to walk the way that Jesus has called you to be. If you have this true repentant heart, I believe Jesus can do it for you. Not just for you, but for each one of us. That as we together change our minds to be like Christ, to give our life as a living sacrifice to Jesus, I believe he will make a way. It's all in the heart. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor, if you want to uh, join uh, in prayer, you can... Um, if you sense anything in the spirit or if you just want to close in prayer. Yeah. I do. I am conscious of the word of God, which addresses this issue of being a living sacrifice with as Paul writing to the church in Rome. I'm conscious of the apostle Peter says, um, not Peter, Matthew rather helps us to understand this um, as, he, as he says, um, don't become so consumed with um, yourself and what you wear and what you eat and what you drink and it's all about you, but actually to seek the kingdom of God first. Mm. and his righteousness mm. and all these things will fall into place mm. loving God I pray for that move of your spirit uh, in these moments that draws us to that place of acknowledgement of you that you take the central place in the throne of our lives as I with uh, my brothers and sisters, as we together as our best friends, as we repent of not having loved you with heart and soul and mind and strength of putting ourselves too high up in the agenda. We, I, Father, I pray for that move of your spirit in these yes, moments Lord. that puts that back into its rightful place. Yes, Lord. And we may see your kingdom come and your will done. Yes, Lord. 
will done here among us. Yeah. And Father, I pray for those who, uh, for all of us this way, but particularly for those who are visiting uh, this morning as part of our uh, big welcome, those who have been invited by friends, that those who have heard about this incredible love of God and this Son of God, Jesus, laying down his life, that we may have life. Yes. That if they want to know more, Father, I pray that you will embolden them to ask the friends they have come with. Mm. That they may be able to explore that. And so come to know in a most wonderful way, your most wonderful love. Mm. Oh God, so bless us and help us and keep us as we go into the week. Protect us uh, mm. as we seek to stay safe with all the COVID-19 stuff. Yeah. As we seek to do social distancing, as we seek to uh, respond to that which our government requires of us, uh, as we seek to love each other by the way we live our life as part of yeah. our good social uh, uh, conscience and Christian responsibility. Enable us to so live and be in the days to come until we gather again uh, in the next week. Yeah. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.